I'm Laura Seidel, and I'm the chairperson of Captain Planet Foundation. And for since 1991, we have really been um, making sure that young people and educators, formal and in informal, provide hands-on environmental uh, activities. And um, we're focused on creating those solution makers, change makers for the environment. We have kind of evolved from making grants to educators uh, to supporting youth directly because that's what they wanted. They're like, don't go through the system. We want you to support us. Just like Uma, who just did her TED Talk at 14 years old, said, you know, it's really important for us to be trained, you know, how to run campaigns, how to, to you know, how to um, really see those campaigns through, how to be activists for change, how to write op-eds. You know, civics is so important. Debate is so important that we, and, and that the youth uh, the need the platforms, the data, the technology, and, um, and really microfinance, you know, micro support, cash support to do the, the, wor the work that they need to do. And so we have the Planeteer Alliance at the foundation, which does just that. And we've been doing trainings of youth uh, in person and online and around the globe. And we have trained thousands of youth about how to run campaigns and win. And, um, and they do, you know, need that support, the cash support, the mentorship, training mentorship, and uh, that's what we've been providing, and it really makes a difference. It takes those young people and makes them hyper effective so that they can change things that are happening in their own community that they have a problem with, that they see needs to be changed. They're unbiased, and they have can-do attitudes, and they are so, they care about what's going on, and they can detect the BS and the lies, deception, collusion, corruption, and they want to go and change it because they, they are very aware that their future is hanging in the balance. And uh, just like Greta Thunberg said, you know, we have to work together multi-generationally to support young people. They can't vote. We can vote, but we need to support them because they they need it. They have a lot of power. They have a lot of passion. But it, it has to be taken from a micro level to a macro level. And, it, you know, it's just like some of the things, you know, that we've asked young people to do. And, you know, our peers, our older generations, is it doesn't add up to hill of beans when you've got it's the policy it mat that matters. It's our political leaders making those policies. We have to hold them to account. And it's about the corporate bad actors, um, you know, fossil fuel companies and, you know, the, the companies that are creating all this plastic pollution and fighting everything uh, that would really make recycling effective. Um, and so young people are really dismayed because we're not making the progress um, that we have to make to ensure a livable planet for them and for their families, right? We're just not moving the needle fast enough. Uh, and there's a lot of great happening. I mean, renewable energy and, you know, electrifying everything, cars, school buses, uh, that needs to be scaled. But this regenerative agriculture, you know, putting more back than what you're taking and in, in creating systemic change about the way we grow our food can be a huge solution, a very important solution that not a lot of people are talking about. And that's what we're kind of trying to prove, you know, on on Turner Ranches is that we can we can make our even though our land is healthier than our neighbors as far as biodiversity goes and native plant species, it's still it was so hammered by cattle like most of the land in, in the world, grazing land. We just didn't know what we didn't know. And the fact that we were constantly grazing and not resting the land, mimicking uh, the wild herds of 
bison in North America and in Europe and the wildebeest in Africa, you know, if you use the domesticated animals and you graze them in in the right way, the adaptive multi-paddock grazing, amp grazing, um, then you can create, recreate life very quickly in one season. And it just, the soil health just keeps getting better and better. And the native plant species keep, you know, the, the, the seeds were lying in, it, latent in the ground for sometimes 50 to 100 years. And they're just waiting for the right conditions. And you create those right conditions with cattle or bison, um, but because uh, they're fertilizing and the fertilizer helps um, produce, encourage plant growth, but the urine helps support mycelium. So, and there's a very uh, symbiotic relationship between the plants that draw down carbon and the mycelium that draws down methane. And a lot of people don't talk about that. There's not a lot of solutions out there for methane drawdown, right? So it's very, very interesting. And the more we can build awareness, um, the better off we're all going to be and drive consumer demand in, in that way. And we have done school gardens at the Captain Planet Foundation for 30 years. A lot of our grants uh, through schools and educators were for school gardens. We've done a couple thousand of them. And we, about um, 12 years ago, got all the best practices from school gardens and how you enculturate them in schools instead of allowing them to, you know, very easily go fallow because they were tied to a passionate educator or passionate parents that kind of aged, their kids aged out, you know. So we have enculturated them and made them, made it a learning garden situation with standard space curricula, mobile kitchen carts that could be taken around from classroom to classroom where the kids learn how to grow their food, harvest their food, take it into the classroom, make a smoothie because we're partners with Vitamix or cook, you know, tomatoes down into a tomato sauce, which is a chemistry lesson or make big bowls of salad. And a lot of these kids in Title I schools have never eaten organic, fresh produce and actually know where it comes from. And it's game-changing. It informs their palate, their own ideas of health and nutrition for their whole lives, and, and allows them to change the culture within the, you know, the cafeteria, with the cafeteria ladies, and the system. So, um, yeah, it's really important that the kids understand their life support system and they learn it all in a garden. Every kid should have their hands in the dirt and learn that bugs are not a bad thing. Worms are a great thing. And uh, that, you know, soil health is important. That those soil microbes and methanotropes and all, all of the critters that live there that they're really afraid of. You know, a lot of times when we go to a school for the first time and grow these gardens, the kids are, the little wheels are turning in their heads and they're like, their legs are quivering and their tears start welling up in their eyes because they're thinking, okay, well, there's, the dirt is dirty. You know, their parents told them not to get dirty. Um, they're bugs and they don't really know how to eat vegetables. They're afraid of eating vegetables, but kids get so excited of what they learn in a school, more formal setting, and they take it home to their parents and their grandparents. And they, they're like, look what we've done. You know, to try these tomatoes. We can grow them right here on our balcony. It's, you're just going to be, you know, so excited uh, about this. I'm going to make you dinner and, you know, with what I've grown. And they say, you know, from research that kids that grow in a garden intergenerationally become the biggest environmental stewards. That and camping and hiking and just being out in nature and learning experientially in nature, big contribute contributors to stewardship. And um, and I and, and and you know, it's just like once they realize wonder and awe. That's something that can never be taken away from them. And it is, um, you know, we do need civics in the school. It's absolutely essential. And I don't know how that ever got, got taken out of the educational system to begin with. But it's, uh, it's, it's important to bring it back. 
but um, the Planetary Alliance, you know, the, the youth are like shutting down coal fire plants. They're banning plastic straws in their school districts. They're writing legislation to ban plastic bags for their city councils. They're shutting down um, these big oil tanks uh, that are leaching, um, you know, toxins into the drinking water supply. They're preventing uh, shipping companies from blowing holes in their coral reefs. You know, it's amazing what these kids will do when it's, you know, they're youth led and activated and they just really discover their superpower. And especially when they act together. I mean, that's, you know, that's when it really starts to create systemic change. There are a couple of documentary films that everybody should see. The Biggest Little Farm, um, The Kiss the Ground, which is on Netflix. And it's, these are, you know, movies that show really how soil health is so critically important. And they're appropriate for kids, right? They're truly eye-opening. And then there's a Soil Carbon Cowboys, a, a whole series done by Peter Bick at Arizona State University, who did Carbon Nation, the film that I was spoke to. And then Common Ground is a new film uh, that's out, the sequel to Kiss the Ground. And we actually, at the Captain Planet Foundation, created um, soil carbon cycle curricula and soil health curricula for Kiss the Ground, which is a nonprofit in California that made the film. We need to do a better job you know, engaging youth and giving them the scientific data and the information that they need to know how to argue um, and, and debate the issues and to know how to spend their time and energy um, to make change. And I don't think we've done a good enough job. You know, just the Fridays for the Future that um, Greta Thunberg led 4 million youth around the world to do the Friday sit-outs and marches are really important. It created a lot of awareness and a lot of change, but it's not the, enough. We need to give them the resources, the tools, the platforms, um, the financial support to really, and not a little tiny bit goes such a long way with them, um, but to know how to run and scale campaigns. And once they figured out that they can make a difference, there is no turning back, but we need to do more of that. And we need to be voting on their behalf, um, you know, in electing um, political leaders that get climate change and how, how we need to act with urgency because half of our country is, is you know, half of our legislators kind of are in that, on that side and the other half are saying it's still calling it a hoax perpetrated upon the, you know, American people. And I hate to get political, but you just have to because politics and voting has consequences. And right now we need to be doing everything, each of us individually and all together, everything in our power to turn the Titanic around because we are certainly heading for that iceberg if we haven't hit it already. And I don't like to think that we have, but um, Greenland, they're just, I heard on NPR this morning on the way to the airport that the rock formation of Greenland is rising up because the weight is not holding it down anymore. And the Antarctic, I mean, we heard from Sylvia Earle and some of the other speakers um, about how dire the situation is and that we were looking between six meters and 60 meters of sea level rise, you know. So if we could just draw down more CO2E per acre or per hectare, you know, a ton here and there, everywhere, at least a ton, we could just meet, meet that gap of, of where we are right now and meeting the, uh, the climate agreement. We owe it to our kids and grandkids to do everything in our power. And sometimes it feels like you're paddling upstream against a major you know, force. And, um, but anyway, and it just really makes me so emotional when I hear young people talking and 
about it, the crisis, and they're suffering from eco-anxiety or climate anxiety and layer on all the violence in the world, the wars that they're watching every day where, you know, civilians are being blown up, including children that would be their peers. It's it's a lot. It's heavy. So we we do need to help them as much as we possibly can. And I don't think we're doing enough. And we certainly I, I want. Well, you, you don't have to you don't have to include it, but Trump cannot win. You know, we just can't go back and let oil companies run uh, run things in this country. We've got to move away from fossil fuels as quickly as possible.